I don't think marriage should be about money, but some people really care about wealth more than anything else. My sister-in-law, Laura, is one of those people. I never thought greed would become such a big issue over an inheritance after my brother, a well-respected surgeon, died. I'm Julia Roberts, I manage a jewelry store, and I'm happy being single at 35. However, I've been thinking about marriage since my boyfriend recently proposed. Our families are getting together tomorrow to celebrate our engagement, but I can feel tension brewing. My older brother Kyle, who is a well-known surgeon in Paris, has always looked out for me and taught me a lot because he's much older. He jokes about checking out my boyfriend as if he were my dad, which makes me laugh. But I can tell he's a bit worried. Kyle's marriage to Laura, a very beautiful woman with questionable morals, really shows the conflict between looks and true character. Despite their glamorous life, Laura's love for luxury puts a strain on our family relationships. Her need for expensive things often comes before her promises, leaving us let down and upset. At first, we overlooked Laura's behavior, thinking it was because of the pressure to look good. But as she started skipping more family events, our patients started to wear thin. Her decision to cancel on tomorrow's gathering at the last minute for tea at a fancy hotel is a perfect example of her selfishness. While we wouldn't mind her not being there, it's her lack of thought for others that really bothers me. I'm tired of always bending over backward to accommodate her every whim. I tried to talk to my brother about it, but his weakness for Laura stops any serious conversation. He just apologized for the inconvenience and tried to reassure me. He promised he would talk to her about her actions. I'll be there tomorrow, he assured me, convincing me to drop the issue for now. What bothers me the most isn't just Laura's selfishness, but also how she gets my busy brother to say sorry for her and do her tasks, even though she doesn't work and could handle them herself. Despite being at home full-time, Laura doesn't do housework, she hires cleaners and prefers to eat out. Her days are filled with shopping for brand-name items, leaving little time for real responsibilities. The next day, our family meeting went well, and my boyfriend won everyone over. It was a nice gathering, although it didn't last long. That evening, just as I was relaxing, Laura called out of the blue and started yelling. She demanded scones and macarons and scolded me for neglecting her. Confused, I tried to talk to her calmly, but she kept shouting. Despite my efforts to explain, Laura kept demanding, paying no attention to reason. She even demanded a souvenir from the hotel and had so many other unreasonable expectations that left me both puzzled and tired. What should have been a happy evening ended with me feeling exhausted and annoyed because of Laura's unreasonable demands and outbursts. I wondered how Kyle managed to find peace in his daily life with Laura's constant mood swings. What made him marry her in the first place? While her beauty was obvious, her self-centered nature was off-putting. I thought maybe she was spoiled because of her looks. I was worried for Kyle, but I knew I shouldn't interfere with his marriage. It was his choice, after all, and he had always respected my choices too. The next day at the jewelry store where I work, I saw Laura outside, walking arm in arm with a man around her age, probably in his late thirties. They were chatting comfortably as they came into the store. I paused before going over to them. Laura acted like nothing was wrong when she saw me, which made me even more uncomfortable. When I asked about the man with her, Laura said he was just an old friend from her modeling days. Still, seeing them together, especially since she's married, made me feel uneasy. As Laura looked at the jewelry, she boldly asked if she could get an employee discount, seemingly unaware that this was inappropriate. I calmly told her we don't offer such discounts. Honestly, I didn't like the idea of her friend buying things for her and she seemed slightly annoyed when I told her the discount wasn't available. Laura picked out some items and left, leaving the man to pay the bill. This made me wonder about their relationship. That evening, I decided to talk to Kyle about what I saw, but when I called him, he seemed really down, 
Kyle, what's wrong? I asked, noticing he was upset. I had my suspicions about Laura, but I didn't mention them. When I tried to talk about my upcoming wedding, Kyle seemed distracted by his own thoughts. He talked about saving for our wedding next year and invited me over, but didn't say much about Laura. His uncertainty made me curious. Although I tried to discuss the wedding details, Kyle was noncommittal and ended the call abruptly, asking me to meet at our parents' house without explaining why. Maybe he wasn't feeling well. Kyle, a dedicated surgeon, often puts other people's needs before his own health, and this tendency of his to ignore his own health worries me, despite his jokes about the risks of his job. I couldn't stop thinking that his non-stop work schedule was wearing him down. I doubted that Laura, with her self-centered attitude, could give him the support he needed. Kyle sent an email later outlining the plan for a gathering at our parents' house. When I got there, I was shocked to see how pale and worn how he looked, worse than ever before. I asked him how he was, but he just gave me vague answers about being busy with work. Finally, I gathered the courage to talk about Laura's recent actions. I told him about her visit to my store with a young man and wondered aloud if she was deceiving him again. Laura's past actions had always worried me, and I couldn't overlook them any longer. I've been too busy with work to pay much attention to her, my brother confessed. Our parents were upset by her absence at the gathering, which gave me a chance to bring up my concerns. When I asked Kyle about Laura's absence, he said solemnly, Laura isn't here today, which is why I asked you all to come. I have a favor to ask. With a serious look, Kyle shared some shocking news. Despite our shock, he stood firm, leaving us stunned. Five months later, tragedy struck as my brother died from stomach cancer, a result of constant stress and overwork. It was a harsh truth to face. Despite his commitment to saving others, he had neglected his own health. He had started to see signs and went through tough tests that confirmed his illness. We wished he had told us sooner. Tears flowed at his funeral, surrounded by a deep feeling of loss. I remembered all the ways Kyle had supported me during my early challenges. His death before he even turned 20 left us overwhelmed with grief. Yet during our mourning, Laura's actions were glaringly obvious. She wore a flashy necklace to the funeral, a gift from another man, showing no respect for the solemn occasion. Her insensitive behavior was unbearable. Overcome with anger, I confronted her. Why are you wearing that? I asked, my voice shaking. Don't you realize how much my brother cared for you? Laura just smiled, seemingly untouched by the seriousness of the situation. I know, she replied carelessly. It's just how the world works. If you're so unhappy, why did you marry me? Her harsh words really hurt, and I had to hold back my anger in front of my brother, our parents, and the others. It was clear that Laura didn't care about my brother's memory at all. Her selfish behavior and her careless talk about their marriage and waiting for her inheritance made me furious. Before I knew it, I almost slapped her, but a man by her side caught my hand. He then introduced himself as a nurse who had worked with Kyle and was here to look after me at Kyle's request. I was confused in trying to understand everything going on. Despite the sadness of the funeral, hearing the laughter of the nurses and doctors, who were Kyle's colleagues, brought me a moment of comfort amidst the chaos. I turned to the nurse who had stopped me during the laughter for some clarity. His reply was straightforward. Did the doctor leave any inheritance behind? Your family should know. His words hit home, I knew very well that my brother hadn't left any inheritance. But Laura, not knowing this, became hysterical. She started accusing us of plotting against her to take the money for ourselves. She was sure she would soon get a large sum of money. As Laura's accusations grew louder, the nurse's amusement turned into full laughter. Seeing things getting out of hand, my dad stepped in, calm but assertive. Do you really not know? He asked her. Eager for answers, Laura demanded to know what was going on. I obliged, sharing the details of my brother's financial arrangements during his lifetime. 
He had set aside 20 million euro, specifically for my wedding, and had other generous gifts planned as well. As this reality dawned on Laura, her expression changed dramatically from shock to pale disbelief. My brother, although highly respected for his medical expertise, was known for his lavish spending habits. He indulged in extravagant parties, exclusive dinners, and luxurious accommodations as a way to relieve the stress from his demanding career and family responsibilities. Despite his intent to share these joys with Laura, she was notably absent during both his challenging and celebratory moments. It was not Laura who stood by him during tough times. Instead, it was his colleagues and friends, the very people who were now gathered to pay their respects, who supported him. The nurses, whose laughter had earlier filled the room, began to share poignant memories of my brother's acts of kindness and generosity. They recounted how, despite his hectic schedule, he always made time to look after them, hosting gatherings that left a lasting impression. Their stories deepened their admiration for him, inspiring them to strive harder in their own careers. As they spoke, they revealed another significant act of kindness from my brother, the donation of the remainder of his estate to the hospital. Representatives from the hospital were present and expressed their gratitude for his contribution, which would help alleviate their annual struggles with research funding and improve future medical care. Witnessing the extent of my brother's compassion towards others, I couldn't help but feel a pang of disappointment towards Laura. While he had impacted so many lives in such positive ways, Laura, who should have been his closest companion, displayed nothing but selfishness and greed. Months later, Laura contacted me, her tone as demanding as ever, eager to secure what she believed was her rightful inheritance. However, her careless management of the estate affairs revealed a shocking truth. Despite my brother's considerable earnings, his assets were nearly depleted. In her pursuit of the mansion and other properties, Laura had overlooked the fact that Kyle had accumulated significant debts. This oversight left her with only a fraction of what she had anticipated. Her pleas for help were met with no sympathy, as her earlier behavior had alienated those who might have otherwise been inclined to assist her. I made it clear to Laura that with Kyle's passing, the family ties that loosely bound us had effectively dissolved. Her behavior throughout had spoken louder than any words could, revealing her true motives despite her claims of affection for my brother. I could potentially help you out of this trouble, I told her, but how can you expect that after you've been so blatantly selfish? My voice was tinged with disbelief and disappointment as I spoke. Laura's response was fraught with impatience, a stark contrast to the composed facade she usually maintained. She was grappling with the new and harsh reality of inheriting not only the mansion, but also the substantial debts that came with it. I reminded her, somewhat coldly, that inheriting meant taking responsibility for both assets and liabilities. I even pointed out that she had the option to renounce the inheritance within five months of being informed. The suggestion that she might sell the luxury items she had amassed over the years to cover the debts only elicited a flood of tears and desperate pleas for forgiveness. Despite her remorse, or perhaps because of the insincerity I felt underlined it, I found myself unable to offer any consolation. The conversation ended with a heavy heart on my part, as I was unable to reconcile her past actions with the cherished memory of my brother. Following Kyle's death, the plans for my wedding had to be postponed by a year. During this challenging period, the cloud of depression lingered over me, a stark reminder of the loss and betrayal I had experienced. Recognizing my distress, my husband and his family extended their heartfelt understanding and support. Their compassion was a beacon of light during a time darkened by loss and disappointment. Determined not to let the memory of my late brother down, I vowed to live a life of gratitude, channeling my energies into supporting and acknowledging those who had stood by me through thick and thin. When the wedding finally took place, it was not just a celebration of union, but also a tribute to Kyle's lasting impact on those around him. 
his popularity and the respect he commanded among his colleagues became poignantly evident as many of them visited his grave to pay their respects. They shared stories of his generosity and kindness, especially towards his co-workers, further cementing his legacy as a man who had genuinely cared for others beyond the confines of family and personal gain. Through these reflections and tributes, the wedding became a dual ceremony of love and remembrance, intertwining my new beginning with the honoring of a life that, while tragically cut short, had profoundly touched many. This convergence of joy and sorrow underscored the complexities of life and the enduring influence of genuine connections forged in both joyous and challenging times. I was always concerned that my brother's generosity might make him vulnerable to those looking to exploit his kind nature. However, the overwhelming support from friends and colleagues after his passing reassured me that his goodwill had been genuinely appreciated, not taken advantage of. Meanwhile, news about Laura's decline began to circulate within the jewelry industry and among our social circles. Known for her lavish lifestyle and a series of questionable relationships, she painted a stark contrast to my brother's legacy of generosity and integrity. Laura, who had once lived in luxury, was now forced to sell her opulent mansion due to her unsustainable spending habits and the mountain of debt she had accumulated over the years. Now, she found herself living in modest accommodations, a far cry from the grandeur she was accustomed to. Her financial downfall was a topic of quiet discussion and served as a cautionary tale about the perils of living beyond one's means. Reflecting on Laura's misfortunes, I couldn't help but feel vindicated in my long-held belief that marrying for money was a fundamentally flawed motivation. It was clear that Laura's priorities had led her to a lonely and challenging path, whereas my brother's focus on kindness and giving had earned him lasting respect and love from those around him. Motivated by these reflections, I vowed more fervently to honor my brother's memory by protecting his legacy. He had spent his life not only as a skilled surgeon but as a pillar of support and generosity in our community. In his professional life, he was revered not just for his medical expertise but for his willingness to go beyond the call of duty to assist his colleagues and patients alike. At home, he had always been my protector, guiding, and supporting me through life's challenges. Determined to keep his spirit alive, I engaged more actively in community service and charity work, areas my brother was passionate about. I organized fundraisers and volunteered at the hospital where he had worked, helping to fund the programs he had started or supported. These efforts brought me a sense of closeness to him, a feeling that I was continuing his work in some way. Moreover, I took steps to ensure that the stories of his kindness and generosity were remembered and celebrated. I shared these stories at community gatherings and on social media, ensuring that his legacy would inspire others as much as it inspired me. The positive responses from people who had been touched by my brother's life encouraged me to keep sharing and celebrating his life. In doing so, I found a profound sense of purpose. While Laura's life seemed to spiral into chaos as a result of her choices, I found strength and fulfillment in upholding the values my brother had taught me. This contrast between our paths was a stark reminder of the different outcomes that result from our life choices. By choosing to embody my brother's principles of generosity and support, I not only honored his memory but also enriched my own life, making it fuller and more meaningful. Through these actions, I not only kept my brother's memory alive, but also ensured that his legacy of kindness and selflessness continued to impact the community, proving that the values he lived by were his true lasting wealth.